Hi, this is USDJPY and uh, today it's uh, Monday 29th of July 2013 and the time is 7.17 GMT. We are looking at the H4 chart of the pair and um, let's see um, uh, whether this correction uh, is approaching to, is, is, is going to be reversed so that the pair resumes its uptrend. We see that from the daily chart, biases are rather bullish than bearish. Uh, I'm using here Ichimoku Kinko Hio. You see the Kumo, the cloud. You see Tenkan Sen, the red line, Kijan Sen, the blue line, and Chiku Span, the green line. And uh, we had, the price is moving right now above this flat top Kumo. It has a flat top. Um, Kumos with flat tops or flat bottoms, when the price are below them, they act as magnets. So this magnet attract the price, but um, we believe that uh, uh, it will reverse and continue, resume its uptrend. But because we are not profits, um, and uh, because uh, nobody really knows the market's um, wishes and the market's intentions. Um, and although we have a leading Kumo, which is bullish, but it, its um, morphology is not clearly bullish, we need to use some other tools and make sure um, that uh, there is a reversal potential. First of all, going to the H4 time frame, we can use our Fibonacci retracement tool to see how much has the price reversed. It was going up till this point, and we see that it touched the 50.0 uh, Fibonacci level, which is one of the most uh, m most frequent uh, reversal levels, uh, retracement levels of the price. Uh, the next most frequent is 61.8. So it touched 50.0 and usually after this happens, not always, but usually after this happens, we see a reversal. The price resumes its previous uptrend. Let's see, uh, here we see that we had, uh, uh, we had uh, this uh, fall here, but it didn't, uh, it didn't trigger our, um, our trigger zone, uh, according to our Fibonacci system, let me show you. If we use only the Fibonacci tool to help us set up our trades, we have uh, a trigger zone, which is between 38.2 uh, and 61.8. And uh, we see that the biggest wave we had here, after the big wave, the price failed to close. We didn't have, on the previous plunge, we didn't have a, a, a candlestick closing inside this zone just spikes. So now we had candlesticks closing inside this zone and according to, this, to the Fibonacci system um, we will go long after we make sure that the price has gone above 23.6. You see here this is the line of, our, of the previous entry of a previous signal we had given before this corrective plunge and um, we will uh, go long, we will enter long according to the system on the H4 chart if we see one whole candlestick closing above 23.6. One whole candlestick on the H4 chart. The second condition for this system is to check on the daily chart to check if RSI is above 50. If RSI is above 50 on the daily chart, we end the long once one whole candlestick on the H4 chart closes above 23.6.
this is one of the Fibonacci uh, systems. But we can use, let's delete this, but we can use also uh, other systems to, to, to decide uh, to set up our trade. That right now, um, I made this video uh, only for you who are already long on the pair and you are a bit scared from this corrective uh, move and you want to know if the price will reverse and when and I want to help you with this video uh, see how we uh, which you which tools we can use to see and to catch the reversal point so usually um, I go to the properties and I click on show volumes and I'm expecting to see a big spike on the H4 chart just below this point which will make sure that we have a reversal. Uh, a spike is on the making but it's not as big yet to give me what I want. Okay, I want to see a spike and then a valley after the spike. I don't see that yet. I see a spike, but not the valley, not something extraordinary. So I go again to properties, I unclick volumes, and I'm going to use another tool. To I will remove Fibonacci from here so that I have the chart as clean as possible. Uh, I have traded my stop to a safer place, as you see. And I will go and insert MACD. MACD is an oscillator on a separate pane, separate with the price. We see that when the MACD, the, when the histogram, we have the histogram and we have the signal line. When the histogram moves below zero line, zero line is this level, level is zero, okay? then we have bearish biases and when the histogram moves above the zero line we have bullish biases when the uh, the signal line goes inside the histogram and it runs down inside it then we have a uh, downtrend when it exits the histogram we have a reversal and then we wait to see it going running inside the histogram upwards like it is here uh, to make sure that we have an uptrend okay we don't uh, we want to make sure that we have a reversal here so we should wait to see the the signal line of macd going out of the histogram on the h4 chart we don't see it on the h4 chart yet but look what we see on the h1 chart on the H1 chart, the line has only already gone out of the histogram and we see that uh, the bearish momentum is gradually decreasing. Let's see the picture on the M30, M30 uh, chart. The line uh, is out of the histogram uh, 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 the histogram, uh, the bearish momentum is decreasing uh, and uh, I will tell you what we see on the Ichimoku system in a minute. Let's go to the M15. On the M15 uh, chart, we see that the, the bearish momentum is, is almost decreased as much uh, the histogram has touched has reached the zero level but we want to see a new histogram a, a positive one building here showing that bullish momentum is increasing above zero level and to see the the line the signal line touch the histogram and start running inside it to feel safe okay on the m15 chart this is how we use MACD to spot the possible reversal points. 
now I will use another tool I will delete I will delete uh, MACD I will remove it and I will use PSAR, parabolic uh, support and resistance. Insert indicators, trend, uh, parabolic SAR. I have chosen the lime color for the dots. And what do I want to see? I want to see a first dot below a candlestick if I see a dot below a candlestick, then it means that we have bullish reversal. I don't see a dot on the H4 chart yet. Uh, PSAR is a lagging indicator. When PSAR gives a dot, it means that we have the reversal 100%. Of course, there is no 100%. We have it 98%, okay? So uh, I don't see a bullish dot below candlesticks on H4 chart and I see that the dots here are in a distance from each other and they are in a distance from the price. This is clearly bearish but if I go to the H1 chart I see that the candlestick, the last candlestick just touched the dot and when this happens on the next candlestick uh, a, a, a bullish dot is below it okay you see here when uh, the candlestick almost touched the dot the next one gave a bullish dot below it okay so the h1 chart shows that the reversal is coming on the M30 chart, we see already two dots, two bullish dots, which means that a reversal has happened. Of course, we can know if this is a reversal because you see that the smaller the time frame, the smaller the value of the movements because they may be just fluctuations, okay? Because we had bullish dots here, but the fall continued then we had bullish dots but the fall continued so um, we just watch and make sure that a dot a bullish dot uh, appears on the h1 time frame and then on the h4 when we see a dot on the h4 we know that the possibility is that we have we do have a reversal okay this is how we use PSAR. Let me remove PSAR from here. And let me show you what we watch on the Ichimoku system and how we, um, we, we try to evaluate when the reversal will happen. Every new small wave which has two possibilities. It may be lost uh, in the bigger waves or it may be the beginning of a new bigger move every new wave is being born in the very small time frames so we go to the m1 time frame to see if there is a bullish kumo breakout there okay uh, let me go to the opposite uh, we have we had the bearish kumo breakout on the h4 chart Everything looks bearish on the H1 chart. Everything looks bearish on the M30 chart. Price tries to make a, a bullish Kumo breakout on the M15 chart. Price succeeded to make a bullish Kumo breakout on the M5 chart. Okay. And price has already made a bullish Kumo breakout on the M1 chart. But we want to make sure that the M1, the, the bullish Kumo breakout here will survive. The bullish Kumo breakout on the M5 chart will survive. 
then bullish global breakout on the M15 chart will happen. It hasn't happened yet. We want to see price going above the Kumo and we want to see Chico Span going straight up. We want to see a successful Kumo breakout on the M30 chart and then we will wait for a bullish Kumo breakout to happen on the M H1 chart. It may, ta it may take uh, even one day for that to happen and it will take longer for the H4 chart to give us a bullish Kumo breakout. Okay, so here, which is the level we should uh, monitor for now, we had the bullish Kumo breakout on the M1 chart, we had it on the M5 chart, the, the, the time frame to watch out is M15 chart. When you see a bullish Kumo breakout happening here, go to the next time frame, M30, and wait till you see it happening there. You will know your reversal is in progress. Okay, thanks for watching and happy pips.